SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. In this modern age of the remake and the remaster, a lot of developers take another shot at getting these games perfect and fixing a lot of the bugs that were in the previous versions. However, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is maybe more broken than the original. But hey, we really like broken here, so let's kick things off with this very first glitch. Before we get started, some of these glitches may or may not have been patched during the production of this episode, so if they don't work, consider going back to a previous version if you can. When playing as Patrick, he has this move where he can slam his whole body down on the ground, and there's a really weird side effect when you perform this exact move on top of an NPC. Repeatedly slamming Patrick on top of any character in the game will result in this character actually growing in size. This can take a bit of time and there may be some kind of rhythm to it, but if you stick at it long enough, these characters can grow to be absolutely enormous. Now one theory for why this occurs is there's kind of some animation applied to the NPC where they kind of squash and stretch as you bounce on top of them. And each time you do this, you may be resetting the value for the actual scale of the character each time, but it's doubling up over itself as you're repeatedly and rapidly bouncing on top of it. So as it's trying to reset back to a scale of one, you're bouncing on top of it as it's doing that, resetting it to a scale of two, because it's kind of stacking on top of each other. That theory seems to make the most sense in my mind, but whatever's really going on here, the results are hilarious. Now, you may be wondering to yourself, can SpongeBob do a similar kind of thing? And yes, he actually can, but this is where things get really weird. When SpongeBob repeatedly slams on top of NPCs, they actually shrink in size. So now we have a teeny tiny Patrick. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure what the mechanics are of this glitch, but it's incredibly easy to perform. And with results like this, can you really afford not to try it out? Next, I want to talk about a very small oversight in the game to do with characters. As you may be fully aware, you can play as SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy in this game. You'll also know that you can warp to any spatula you've previously collected simply by entering the map screen and selecting that spatula. And here's where this oversight comes into play. If you choose a spatula that the character you're playing as wouldn't get regularly, for instance, if you choose Sandy and go to the spatula that you get in the tree dome, you'll arrive in the tree dome playing as Sandy while Sandy is already inside the tree dome. There are two Sandys. Now clearly this isn't super game breaking, but it's definitely a very hilarious oversight that I'm not entirely sure how this ended up in the final game. I think basically it's only intended that SpongeBob is the character that can warp around and the game doesn't actually check which character you are when you arrive in a new area. Another amazing side effect of characters being in areas that are exclusive to SpongeBob is that that area only has SpongeBob's voice programmed in, so when the character is supposed to be speaking, his voice comes out of their mouths and it's all animated and everything. A note from Mr. Krabs! And it even smells sweaty, just like him. That is something very strange that I did not wish to see. Are you subscribed to the channel? It turns out that 80% of the people that watch this channel aren't even subscribed. So hey, be a pal and hit that subscribe button. Now let's move on to a really awesome glitch, which surprisingly wasn't in the original SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. The glitch in question goes by many names like Flying Squirrel, but the one that seems to have stuck is the Infinite Lasso Hover. As Sandy, if you jump off a ledge and then turn around to grab the ledge, as she pulls herself up, up, you want to use the lasso. If you perform this just right, you'll see that Sandy doesn't actually descend now from her glide, she kind of just hovers in place. And this, for all intents and purposes, is the glitch, but there are some very useful ways of getting around this game using this glitch. One of the most noteworthy things about this glitch is while you're now in this state, if you press the jump button, Sandy will gain height indefinitely. And once this happens, there's not an awful lot you can do. You can move around in all directions, but you continuously go upwards. The only thing you can do here is press the start button and go to any other spatula to warp back to the ground and have things act normally. However, there are ways of actually controlling this glitch so you can move around levels in unintended ways. But before we actually get into that, we need to understand exactly how this glitch is working. When you first perform this glitch and you're now hovering infinitely, the game doesn't consider you grounded. That's why when you jump, you ascend infinitely. The way to counteract this is simply put Sandy back on the ground. This can be done by walking off a ledge and then walking back onto the ledge, or simply by pushing into walls which can either increase or decrease your height, preferably pushing Sandy back onto the ground so the game can now consider her grounded. This means that 
that now when you press the jump button, you will gain height, but you can actually descend by pressing the lasso button again. With that in mind, you can now fly around any of these stages with Sandy in them using this glitch. The world is your oyster. Wow, that seemed deeply appropriate. I absolutely love glitches like this. It really reminds me of the airwalk in Ape Escape 2, where you could basically do a similar thing. And in terms of application in a speedrun, I mean, this is invaluable tech. And it has the added bonus of being super easy to pull off, so you're definitely going to want to try this one. Next, let's take a look at a very strange glitch that you can do with Spongebob. Standing next to any of the NPCs in the game that you can talk to, what you want to do is begin a bubble ball and talk to that character on the same frame. So as an example, if you're playing on the PS4 version, what you would do is press circle to bubble ball and then R1 at the exact same time. This may take a couple of tries, but if you do this exactly right, what will happen is Spongebob will now begin sliding forwards. The dialogue box for whichever NPC you are talking to remains open, but Spongebob is now just sliding along. Now aside from this being visually entertaining, this actually has a strange side effect where as you slide along, in some cases, like here in Jellyfish Fields after you talk to Mr. Krabs, hands won't actually stop you going out of bounds. You're able to just kind of slide off into the distance and explore around. This isn't the case for a lot of areas in the game, but hey, it's definitely a case for this area. Presumably, the game believes you're in a conversation with an NPC character, and therefore you're most likely stationary, which means there's no reason to stop you from going out of bounds because you're in a conversation, right? And so in some cases, the trigger for actually stopping you going out of bounds is kind of disabled. It makes perfect sense in my head. This is a pretty difficult frame-perfect glitch to get down, but hey, try it out. It's a lot of fun. Getting out of bounds was a very easy thing to do in the original Battle for Bikini Bottom but in this game, it's just as easy, if not easier, if you can believe it. So here we are in downtown Bikini Bottom, and I want to show you some of these glitches in real time because they're so simple, and this might be kind of fun. We can kind of explore, you know, some of the out-of-bounds areas. Now, the first one, this is incredibly simple. Stand on top of this unexploded warhead and just jump, jump, spin. That's it. You're out of bounds now. <laughs> it's that simple. Uh, we can explore around a little bit. Uh, obviously, some of the objects, as we can see, like the clamsicle stand, is not solid. Neither is this uh, ticket booth. Um, but this is actually used in speedruns now because there was a very inconsistent way of getting out of bounds or at least over an invisible barrier to get to later parts of the game. Um, but like I said, it was very inconsistent, so this is a much easier way. In fact, it's hilariously easy, and I'm surprised developers, you know, missed this. Uh, stuff like this is invisible, or not invisible, but it doesn't have any collision. I mean, you can go right out into, you know, just nothingness out here. Everything is kind of, you know, you can just walk straight through it. It's amazing. These are the things that I love about Out of Bounds. You know, you never know what you're going to discover out here. Obviously, you were never meant to see this kind of thing. This feels now feels more like a Boundary Break episode. Like, this is solid. You can stand on this, and that's not solid, but the path just kind of ends over here. <laughs> you know, you were never meant to see this stuff, so it's, it's kind of cool how they kind of, you know, constructed everything to make it look like, oh, hey, it goes off into a really distant land, but really it's just invisible pathways everywhere. <laughs> Now, obviously, this doesn't mean you can reach later levels. There is still a spatula requirement, and as you can see, I only have one spatula, but I'm already in this kind of kelp forest area, but I wouldn't be actually able to go to that level. But I can go inside the tent, which is kind of... Hey, look at me, I'm camping. Now, the cool thing about this game is there are no solid walls um, when you go out of bounds trying to get inbounds necessarily, so what you can do is just kind of jump, and now we're back inbounds. But there are some kind of wacky side effects to being out of bounds and in areas of the game that you're not supposed to be at this point. Well, buddy, I bet the next move you teach me will be the best one ever. That's the funny thing is if you do this glitch and you go out of bounds to an area much later in the game, uh, for instance, Bubble Buddy is not actually here. Um, <laughs> so he, you're just Pinkies talking to nobody. It? He's a disembodied I voice. Yeah, maybe later. No. Paying my entire when you're not what? aim careful. A... So now we have bolt no, but you don't actually gain the ability. Now something that's curious with this is I've tried this exact same getting out of bounds, and this is on the 1.0 uh, patch of this game, and for some reason it doesn't let you out of bounds so easily. But there is a fix for that. Um, for some reason. 
every time you get grabbed by hands and he takes you away, um, you're placed back in the air, and if you do a jump, you gain a little bit more height. So each time he takes you away and puts you back, you gain a little bit more height. So, we can use this to kind of jump over this barrier that's stopping us from getting out of bounds in the first place. Uh, it may take a good little bit of time, but see how you're able to jump in thin air? That gives you just the amount of height that you need to eventually get over the top of this barrier, and there we go, we're out of bounds. So that was something I've found very strange, so... Uh, yeah, but another thing I want to show you is I feel compelled to show you this also, uh, because Shift, a very popular speedrunner for this game and the original Battle for Bikini Bottom, will come for me if I don't show this to you guys, uh, for any potential speedrunners of this game in the future. Uh, instead of going around that way to get uh, to the next areas, and this would be much later in the game, uh, it's actually quicker to uh, double jump on top of this rock and go over here, stand on the very edge of this. Yeah, you don't want to do that, because uh, if you do that, you'll get captured and, and taken away. Um, and it doesn't leave you in, a, in the best position, because now I think I'm technically... Yeah. Okay, I screwed it up. That's what you don't want to do. What you want to do is get right on the very edge of that. Double jump, up to here, bosh. That's the quicker way of doing it. And then when you get around here, what you want to do is kind of this very tricky, uh... Yeah, I, I messed it up. But what you want to do is you want to try and get on that dumpster. Um, because otherwise the game's going to put you in this very weird state where you're kind of inbounds, out of bounds. Uh, it, was, it was friendly that time, it let me do it, but I've had instances where it uh, just kept trying to grab me. Um, Say bubble buddy. Strangely enough, Bubble yeah. Buddy's here now. That's interesting. But you still don't gain the bubble ability. You still ha only have one spatula. So anyway, that's something I wanted to talk about very quickly, otherwise Shift would come for me. <laughs> if you do have the cruise bubble, here's a very simple way to also get out of bounds. You go up to any area where hands would kind of try to stop you from getting out of bounds, specifically this area in Bikini Bottom, and just mash the cruise bubble button, and what will eventually end up happening is hands stops trying to grab you and put you back in bounds, and then you're free to just explore out of bounds. It's very simple, but what I will say is this doesn't work on version 1.02. I tried to get it to work, and they must have patched it in the newer patch, obviously. Um, but it does work on version 1.00 and 1.01. Um, and again, you're just out of bounds and you're free to explore. As you'd expect, a lot of things are invisible, and if you just look off to the distance there, there's, well, not a lot of distance to be seen. This is, in fact, the edge of the world. And you can actually just kind of, well, you saw it earlier, if you go off the edge, you fall and you die. Well, you don't even die, you just fall forever, it's kind of nuts. But again, yeah, everything doesn't have a collision out here, why would it? Collision costs uh, memory resources, uh, so, you know, don't need it. Now these rocks, for some reason, th that was strange, they're kind of, uh, they're solid. It's very strange what's solid and what's not when you're out here. It doesn't make any real sense. Those rocks should never have been solid. Are these solid? Yeah, those rocks are solid too! Why is that? Where do these go exactly? I've never actually seen. They just kind of... oh, we're just... It's just more. It's just more out of bounds. You get the point, guys. Out of bounds, incredibly simple in this game. So for the last kind of very simple out of bounds, something we already kind of touched upon is jumping out of bounds using hands. Now, this does take a little bit longer, but as you'll see, and this is the kind of thing that I may need to speed up, but each time Hands grabs you and replaces you back into the world, he kind of elevates your position ever so slightly higher each time. So you'll see after about a minute of doing this, I'm way higher than when I started. So what's gonna eventually happen is I'll be over the top of an invisible barrier and it will just let me kind of wander around out here. Now this is how you'd get out of bounds in stages that aren't the hub world and don't have that very easy kind of jump on top of the warhead, um, jump out of bounds. This is something a little bit more time consuming, but it's very easy. You could just sit here and each time you do this, you gain a little bit more height. Each time we get loaded in, we're seeing just a little bit more of the highest mountain in the background. See how we just see a little bit more, the snow is getting lighter at the top. We're seeing a bit more of that each time, so we're still gaining height. 
I don't know how much height we're going to need, but eventually we'll be able to get over the top of this barrier. A few moments later. Yay, that was the time. We did it. Nice. Okay, so there we go. Now we're out of bounds. And as long as we don't walk back in bounds, we don't have to do any of that again. Hey, look, SpongeBob, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob! Go something like that. Oh, hey, look, there's no... <laughs> that's kind of crazy. Oh, what? Oh, of course, because uh, there's culling on the other side. How crazy. So there you go, yeah. It's, it's a very time-consuming glitch. That was maybe about eight to ten minutes of just doing that, but eventually you have all this freedom. We can just go wherever we please. Can we climb all the way to the top of this? Of course we can. It has collision for some reason. So why not? I bet it just ends. Is it just gonna end at the- oh, there's more. There's the edge of the world. I don't wanna show off too much of this because I want you guys to be able to explore. Like here we have jellyfish fields. This is one of my favorite things about this game is that all the environments kind of live in the same world. They have this very cool connectivity where you can see other levels within other levels. I love that about this, but this is just gonna be some kind of low poly craziness, right? <laughs> yeah, as you'd expect. Another way you can kind of get out of bounds is by using hands in a different way. And to demonstrate exactly what I mean by this, I'm going to get SpongeBob on top of the tree dome and then slide down the back side of it and have hands kind of drag me back in bounds. Now, if you basically copy what you've just seen, what will happen is hands will actually drag you inside the tree dome. But you're not actually inside the level of the tree dome, you're inside the hub version of it. Which, if it isn't immediately obvious, is not somewhere you're usually able to get. But curiously, there are some solid objects inside here for no apparent reason. And this isn't the only place in Bikini Bottom you can actually do this. If you do this similar glitch next to the theater, what happens is you end up inside the theater model and for some reason there's another sock here? There are 80 socks in total in the game and if you collect this one, that's 81. You're impressed by my math skills, aren't you? Which means you would have 81 over 80 socks, which makes no sense and I have no idea why this is here. Some people have alluded it to a kind of Easter egg from the original. However, if that's true, that means the developers intended you to get out of bounds or in bounds, however this works, to get this sock, which means they knew about this? I have no idea if any of this tracks really. Now anybody who actually pulls this glitch off will immediately realize they're trapped inside this building because the collision is one-sided so there's no way out apart from if you simply just choose another spatula and warp out and the same thing is true of the tree dome glitch also. Finally let's take a look at one of the most broken things in the entire game and this is called taxi glitch and essentially what this glitch will allow you to do is warp to any spatula in the game and you know the bonus thing is it's surprising surprisingly easy to pull off. In this example, I've started a brand new game so there are no spatulas open to me aside from maybe the very first one. Pause the game to reach this menu and then go to Bikini Bottom, select the first spatula and then confirm to reach the taxi screen. You then want to confirm this option by pressing A or X if you're on PS4 and then immediately press pause afterwards. There's about a two or three frame window with which to do this so it's very tight. This is then followed up by another immediate pause which should take you back to the main menu with the taxi load active. So for me on PS4 in real time, this was X to confirm then pause pause and this should take you back to the main menu. This now means you can select any spatula in the game and once again press pause and it should load you into that spatula. Doing this on the first Chum Bucket spatula takes you to the Robo Sponge boss and the cool thing is, the game intends you to have everything you'd need to fight this boss, which basically means it gives you all the power-ups you'd need or would have acquired through the course of the game. Which is a pretty neat side effect of this glitch, actually. Now this glitch will work with any spatula in the game, but I decided to walk back to the very first spatula during the Robo Sponge boss, and for some reason, the fish that commentates during the bosses decided to stick around. It didn't matter where I went, he was always just kind of there, flapping his mouth. Um, gave me a chuckle, I guess. But there you have it, 
guys, some amazingly broken things you can try out in SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Thank you so, so much for sticking through this episode till the very end. If you have a Twitter account, please, please, please follow me at Show. It's my number one weapon against the YouTube algorithm to get my videos to you without you missing them in sub boxes. Believe me, it's a real issue, and if you follow me on Twitter, you can actually see these videos when they drop. And lastly, a huge, huge, huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are really keeping the show running, and I love you so much. Thank you for supporting the show. I've taken up enough of your time, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!